this just in breaking news our top story tonight new evidence shows ali amsirovich has no remorse for poker cheating my thoughts the least amsirovich could do is say i'm sorry ish next up the poker industry once again awards its stars with the 2023 poker awards there's debate as to who should have won with some saying this was a highway robbery also tonight, Phil Galfon faces backlash that the Run It Once tool Vision has been used for RTA in some instances. If only there was a way they could have seen this coming. Some tragic news out of Indiana as grown man Alan Kessler ordered a sandwich and complained about the soup that came with it. He is 57 years old. And finally tonight, Chris Moneymaker's poker room shut down by local politicians. I guess you could say that this was more of a money loser. Okay guys, I'm rusty. It's been a little while. All this and more tonight on Poker News. Before we get into our topic today, I want to let you guys know that the biggest poker tournament series here in the state of Texas, the Lodge Championship Series, is coming up in just a couple of months, and we have all kinds of stuff going. We have some small stakes buy-ins throughout the series for people that want to play in some big prize pool small buy-in events. We also have a $3,000 main event with a $2 million guarantee. Last year, we overlaid by a few hundred thousand, so it should be great value for you guys one way or another. And then we also now this year are doing a high roller series that will lead into the main event on that final week. So tons of stuff for everyone. If you want to learn more, there's a link in the description below. Moving on, let's talk about Ali M. Surovich. So if you guys aren't familiar with Ali, he has come over a lot of attack under the past couple of years. Well, for frankly, cheating. The accusations against Ali and Jake Schindler are essentially that they used real-time assistance while playing in online on online poker. Basically, the computer would tell them what to do and they would play perfect poker when playing against their opponents. If you do use real-time assistance while you're playing, to this degree, it's basically going to be impossible for you to lose in the long run. You will beat your opponent, and it is cheating. Since these accusations have been levied, many high-stakes poker pros have come forward saying that they believe this to be the case. And also, uh, both Jake and Ali have been banned from poker tournament series such as Poker Go. They also allegedly have been banned from EPT, and it seems like a lot of different tournament stops do not allow them to play anymore. In fact, if you look at both of their Hendon mobs for Ali and Jake, they don't have a tournament cash since the World Series of Poker last year. High Stakes Poker Pro Alex Foxen has also weighed in on this, saying the poker blacklist can't come soon enough. Ali is banned from GG for multi-accounting and real-time assistance. I have witnessed numerous chip dumps to horses and many suspicious changes in play from people known to be horses when deep in online MDTs. So there are certainly a lot of people that have said that they think something's up when it comes to Ali and how he played. But there have still been questions about maybe is Ali remorseful or did he stop cheating or is he turning over a new leaf? Well, with the new evidence today from Daniel Negreanu, or rather a few days ago from Daniel Negreanu, it appears that isn't the case. Daniel tweeted, Before knowing about Ali M. Surovich's transgressions, I thought he was a life lifer who loved the game and will be a tournament fixture for a long time. I'm hearing that he is continuing his antics and is likely irredeemable at this point. All operators, both online and live, should proactively ban him indefinitely. He is the opposite of remorseful and is actually boastful, bragging about robbing former friends. Tough to read those words because not only for someone to have done these things, but also be actively boastful about it just shows that they have no understanding of the types of damage that they're doing to other people. Poker is for real money, money that affects people's lives. And to be cheating in a game where the point is to win money, it's a completely scummy move. And it's something that we really should not in any capacity allow for within poker, which is why I'm proud to announce that the Lodge is proactively banning Ali M. Surovich from playing poker at the Lodge. It's kind of obvious. He's never played here, but now he won't play here. So yeah, it's going to show him. But what was this tweet really all about? Let's find out and go live to Daniel Negreanu with more on this breaking story. Daniel Negreanu coming to you live from Las Vegas with a story on Ali Amshurovich. Apparently he's no longer donating 50% of his winnings to St. Jude as he did last year. And hold on, I'm getting word that, yep, yeah, I'm getting word that he's also still a cheat. Back to you, Doug. Mm, fascinating stuff. Thank you for the update in the field. Moving on, let's talk about the Poker Industry Awards. And this is a tough topic for me 
because over the years I've had some strong opinions about the poker awards. And as I get a little bit older and I look at what the awards do and the importance of them to the people, I feel a little bit torn. On one hand, when it comes to these poker awards that are issued every year, I do feel like there is a significant degree of bias towards the people within the industry that are the most well-networked and the most close with the people that are judging and actually deciding who wins the awards. On the other hand, there are a lot of great people in poker whose work does get to be highlighted because of these awards, and I don't want to take away from those things. Part of it's also that I'm at least a little bit bitter from the years where I was essentially the leading content producer for poker and I never won anything, so I'm definitely going to be in the more biased against them camp. Kind of where I'm at today is I think it's important for us to highlight within the industry that there are people doing good things, and I like that aspect of the awards, but we should probably also be willing to call out when the awards miss something tremendously or perhaps there's something wrong with the categories. Look, I know most of you probably don't care that much. It's an award. Who cares? The viewership is low. But for the people in the industry, I think it does matter because it means a lot to basically be nominated and awarded something that shows that you are a leading player in that industry. And it also gives you something concrete to show in terms of accolades. Here we have the full list of people that won Global Poker Awards. Just want to give a few shouts to people that won that I, I thought were pretty cool. Uh, J Dan Cates, Jungle Man, taking down Final Table Performance. When you're dressed up in every Final Table you go to, there's bound to be a pretty good performance. I uh, also want to give a shout out to Caitlin Komiski. She is a Lodge regular. Great to see her win for some of the content she put out last year, especially when following all of the Robbie Jade Lou Jack for drama that was some outstanding content and we actually had her on the show recently over at the lodge as well. Also want to give a couple of shout outs to Haley Hotchessler. She does phenomenal work when it comes to photography for poker related events. Um, and then I, I also want to give a shout out to uh, Hustler Casino Live. I mean, they, they've just really done an awesome job with their stream. You know, now that I own a stream and I've been trying to work on a stream and improve a stream, you don't really realize how many things go into trying to make your stream a high quality show for people to watch. I think they've managed to really build something that's special. I, I think anyone else winning would have been a travesty. I think they've done a phenomenal job. And even though there's definitely been some drama here in the last you know year or whatever that's happened on, on their stream, I think they've overall handled it well. And uh, I think Nick and Ryan have just done a tremendous job. So shout out to Hustler Stream as well. Good job on winning the stream of the year. Definitely deserved. There has been a good amount of social media backlash about Robbie Jade Lou winning the Best Hand Award, but this category is actually a fan choice. So the fans voted and this hand won. So this is not a hand that was picked by the committee of people at the awards. This was voted on by public choice. And so frankly, this just won because it was the most popular. I've also taken some heat recently because we had Robbie on the show after my videos where I said it was very likely that she cheated in this hand. And I want to address that briefly. Just because I have an opinion about what I think happened in a hand doesn't mean that we should operate as someone is guilty. I do think it is likely that Robbie cheated in that hand. But as a few things have come forth at the end, I think it is less likely than I did at the peak. No one stepped up and took the 200K bounty that was offered by various people. And then additionally, we've not had information leak out that suggests that there were that Brian was in on it with her. I think that the overall evidence, when we look at it, I still lean towards that it was cheating, but there certainly is a chance that it was not. And we're not going to simply ban Robbie from our stream because she may have cheated. That's not a bar that we want to set. We want to save that bar for people that we know did. I know I've been getting called out by people like, for example, the captain of ethics himself, Mike Mattisau, who thinks that I should not have had her on our show because I thought I said that I thought she cheated. He also misquoted me and said that I flat out said she 100% cheated, which I did not do. And then he goes on to argue that I shouldn't have had her on there and that essentially I'm doing anything for a dollar. Well, let me tell you what, Mike. I pay my debts on like some people and the reason that we have her on our show is that how a business acts should not be based on what an individual's opinion is. We should save that for facts. And if we want to ban someone for cheating, we should do so when we know them. Just because I have an opinion doesn't mean my business should operate as if those things are facts. For what's worth, when Robbie came out to our stream, it was great to have her. She was very friendly with everyone. And even though she put me in a little bit of an awkward situation on the hot seat by the fireside chat. Get down on one knee. Get down on one knee. No, no. So <laughs> the fans liked seeing her there and it was great for the show. Next topic. Jungle Man wore this hat in Vietnam. It's a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see if it pays off for him. 
Up next, I briefly want to talk about Chris Moneymaker opening up a poker room in Kentucky and it getting shut down. I don't want to talk about this for too long, but I did find this story to be rather peculiar. When I heard Chris was opening up a room there, uh, I looked at, at the, the laws in Kentucky and it seemed expressly illegal to open a poker room. I talked with a senator in Kentucky that said it was expressly illegal to open a poker room. Um, and I'm not exactly sure why Chris thought that he was going to be able to do this. I did talk to Chris personally as well. I don't want to get into the, to the content of that conversation, but it turns out that he was not able to run this poker room. My personal opinion, I think poker should be allowed everywhere. It's your money. It's, it's, a, it's a game that people can decide to choose for themselves. I think that we should have poker everywhere. It's a, it's a lot different than most of the gambling forms. I don't have to sell this to you guys. You're here on my channel, which is a poker channel. The point is poker should be allowed. But if it's not allowed and it's, ex it's expressly not allowed, then you shouldn't be operating as a poker operator. Now, here in Texas, you might think, well, in Texas, the laws are a little bit vague or unclear. And there is certainly some vagueness to the Texas laws. However, there is a very good argument that they are actually, in fact, legal. And most of the state is under that interpretation. And that's why we see 70, 75, 80 poker rooms all over the state. There are some occasional cities that fight back. And you can certainly argue about economic benefit or private place. But if you're interested in trying to make poker a reality in the long term for Texas and protect it across the state, you can head on over to Texans for Texas Hold'em. We have a lobbying effort going in full capacity here to protect Texas Hold'em here in the state of Texas. We have some more breaking news. It turns out that Alan Kessler has been complaining on Twitter. Incredible. We'll be following this story closely. And when you get an update like this, it's hard not to. It appears he lost $6 on a purchase. Much like he lost $6 to our monthly monster leaderboard. That's right, Alan. <laughs> we got your six bucks. This is just great content right now. This is phenomenal content. Finally tonight, let's talk about Phil Galifon's recent debate that's been happening over on Twitter about the program vision that Run It Once has that apparently you can query for how to play flops or turns with different hands. And allegedly people have been using it while playing or to win money playing online. Galfon tweeted his response to being called out on this subject, and it's a few too many tweets for me to be able to read you, but the cliff notes here were that when they launched the program, it was slower, and so they weren't concerned about RTA, but because of advancements made in other areas of the program, it's now much quicker, and so he recognizes there could be a threat of people using it to play online, and so they are revisiting some ways that they can try and prevent this from essentially becoming worse, or rather people using it to win money playing online. Dominic Niche weighed in on an original tweet that Galfon had about flop strategy, or rather essentially using vision as RTA, where he quoted Galfon saying that querying a flop strategy that only allows one sizing in limited situations followed by a turn strategy with two sizes at most, while not being able to query pre or river strategies does not create a strong RTA tool, even if you can keep up. Dominique says that the statement is false. Simple sims are better than any poker player. Phil is common knowledge. Someone used vision to cheat and beat PLO at 20 big blinds per hundred over 100K hands. What's kind of interesting to me here from Phil is I feel like with this tweet saying that it's not strong enough, right, to be able to beat games. And then he tweets again later. It's now it's now too fast. Those are actually different things. And I think that Dominic is definitely right here in that. Being able to use a solver in pretty much any capacity for flop and turn spots still is cheating and still will definitely beat games. Yes, you're going to have to think about rivers on your on your own, but assuming that on the river you can just kind of think about where you're at in your range, you're going to arrive to those situations with very accurate ranges, and it's going to be stronger than most poker players that are not using some kind of assistance. So I definitely agree with Dominic here, and I think Phil was incorrect in his assessment that only querying flop and turn essentially doesn't create a strong RTA tool. But I do think that Phil is going in the right direction here by trying to readdress the speed of the solver, uh, the, or rather the speed of the program. But he should probably also acknowledge that it is still a strong RTA tool to use this program for in this instance. At least that's my opinion, right, guys? It, it's a tough subject. There's a lot of nuance here. And uh, frankly, the technical side is not something I'm super, super up to date on. I do know how to use a solver. I have studied with a solver. I'm aware of the outputs of these things. And I know that there's their strengths. 
But I think we have to have an honest and intellectually honest conversation if we're going to try to arrive at some conclusions that we can all help with. What I will say to defend Galfon is he's someone that has always acted with a lot of ethics, except for that one time where he said it was okay for Negron to tank if I limped the button. I'm never going to forgive him for that. All jokes to the side, I, I do think that Phil will do the right thing here and he'll figure it out. And it's tough as a business owner because you look at programs like this and it's something that can really help people improve their game. But then if they take them and they use that to then cheat, you need to try and prevent that. But then the question becomes, as a business owner, what is your what is your responsibility? Where is the line? If you simply made things that were super easy to cheat with and you put them out there and said, just plugged your ears and said, it's no, 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 it's okay then obviously you have some responsibility there because you are creating an environment that fo that fosters cheating. But if you essentially hold yourself to a standard that nothing you put out there could ever be used for cheating in any capacity, that you're going to handcuff yourself compared to what's out there in the market. So it is a different, it is a difficult balance. And if Galfund ever wants to talk with me, I mean, obviously Upswing Poker, uh, one of the big training sites here as well, we've yet to foray into the software realm, although that might happen somewhat soon. I'm definitely down to have a conversation with Phil or the other people that own the big training sites to talk about what are some things we can kind of get together as a group to make sure that we are not ruining the online environment. That's more than enough here for me today. I hope you guys enjoyed this news segment. Again, I'm going to continue to do some videos as I get time to do so. Hope you enjoy them. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button, guys. Join the team. We got more content coming at you. I'll see you again soon.